everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Christy, if you're new here. Today we are doing another weekend vlog. You guys seem to be really enjoying me, so I'm going to continue doing them until everyone says they hate it. <laughs> but this is gonna be a really busy weekend. I'm doing a bunch of stuff out and about in the city. Today it is Friday and I am starting the vlog by going to meet my husband Barish for lunch. We are going to Benji Huda. It is a Israeli street food restaurant. I haven't been there in so long and I am so excited to go. Their food is so good. So that is the first thing up on the list. Then I'll be spending the rest of the day going around and filming another video for my channel. So I'll bring you guys with me when I can. Uh, I don't want to reveal too much of the video, so we'll see what we can get into for the vlog while we're out and about doing that. If you guys haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so below. Let's go eat some lunch. chicken and all of the available veggies here. <laughs> Every single veggie. Yep. Yeah, they have like, uh, you can get gyros, you can get bowls, everything. So it's got super hummus, good. baba ganoush, it has corn, tomato, pickles, and then carrots, cucumber. Bunch of stuff. Yep. That looks really good. So now we're gonna dive right in. Okay, there are sirens around because something's happening behind me, but Barsh and I just had the most amazing lunch at Benji Huda. The food was incredible, but now I'm tired and need a coffee, so I'm over in the West Loop to film a different video, so I'm gonna go to one of my absolute favorites, Sawada Coffee. my iced latte from Sawada Coffee. I always get their iced latte Tokyo style. Tokyo style is the simple syrup that they make that's made out of Okinawa sugar, I believe. It's very delicious, I love it so much. Funny enough, when I was walking out of Sawada, I hear Christy, and I turn, and it's my friend Dottie and her husband, Adam. I went to college with them years ago, and it is hilarious that I happened to see them on the streets of Chicago. Barsh and I are home now. I just heated up our dinner last night. Oh, do you hear, look at Lucy. Squeaking away on her giant caterpillar toy. Anyway, last night I made a recipe that was inspired by Flawless Kevin on Instagram. I love following him, he's precious. But he made this vegetable chicken Thai yellow curry dish. So I made the same thing. I cooked up a bunch of onions, sweet potatoes, peppers, and carrots along with chicken and I used the Trader Joe's yellow curry sauce and it actually turned out super good. So I made enough tab tonight for dinner too, so that's what we're having for dinner. we headed downtown to the London House for drinks for a friend's birthday. The view from the London House rooftop bar is so beautiful, I definitely recommend coming here if you're visiting the city. I ordered the Pomplamousse Spritz consisting of Kettle One Grapefruit Rose Vodka, Aperol, Grapefruit, and Prosecco. The drink was delicious and refreshing and perfect for a summer night. On Saturday night, we went to Sushi Plus in Chinatown for dinner with friends. If you watch my videos regularly, you know that I love this place. The food is always so good, and this time Barsh and I shared this giant sake cocktail fishbowl thing, and it was amazing. 
The last event of the week was Windy City Smokeout, which we attended on Sunday. We ate some delicious food, and I will give more details on the event itself in a moment. absolute toe I understand that literally look like a potato head I swear I can't come on here and do videos with my hair pulled back because I literally look like mr. potato head not mrs. mista okay anyway all that aside I wanted to jump on here I'm finishing editing this vlog right now that you are currently watching and I realized that I didn't come on and explain to you kind of my thoughts on Windy City Smokeout this is my first time going and it was an experience. So I wanted to share it with you guys in case anybody's interested in going next year. If you don't know what Windy City Smokeout is, it is a annual festival here in Chicago. They do barbecue food. It's tons of different barbecue vendors from Chicago and other cities, other places all over the country. They also have big name country music acts who perform every night. So the festival usually goes Thursday through Sunday. So every night they have like a big headlining act. On Sunday when we were there, it was John Party. And I'm pretty sure other nights, I think uh, one of the, I think Derek Bentley was one of them or Darius Rucker, somebody who starts the D. I don't know a lot about country music. So a few tips and tricks for Windy City Smokeout. If you are interested in going next year, I'm sure some of these things will change as things do over time. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is the wristbands. They actually mail them to you, which I thought was really interesting. I'm, everything is so digital now that I was like shocked that they were gonna mail them. This is what they look like. Ours says Sunday, cause that was the only day we were going. And basically this comes with a booklet of information. Okay, a booklet is dramatic, but a pamphlet of information. And basically they're like, do not put it on until you are ready to go. And the thing is, is that I did not read the booklet of information until we were literally in the car on the way there. And I'm like pulling it out of the envelope. But basically you have to full blown like register this bad boy before you even get there. There was actually a lot of registration that you had to do. One had to do with COVID, which is understandable. You either had to provide proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test. And they did all of that through an app, which I don't know, maybe I'm just lazy, but I don't like having to be bothered with registering for all these things. Like, yeah, sure, let me show up and show a paper, but having to do all these things electronically is a little annoying to me, but that's just personal preference. <laughs> um, but the same thing happened with the wristbands. Like you had to go on your what the website and you have to physically register these wristbands. So I'm gonna kind of cover up the numbers. I don't know if it matters now, but I'll tell you why I'm covering it up. But on the back of each wristband, there are numbers for you to register it online on their website. And you need to do that before you get there and before you put it on. Because I really don't know how you're gonna get to these numbers if you already put on the wristband. As you can see, like this is the front of it. The numbers are on the back. So if you have this bad boy on your wrist, like that's gonna be a real pain trying to get those numbers on the back. And this has to be registered before you get there. So you can go on there. What you can also do, and the reason I was covering up the numbers is you can actually link a credit card to this and you could pay with this at the festival. So they had a little scanner where when you get your food, you could just be like, boop, with your wrist and it would pay right with this, which actually is really nice because pickpocketing is a huge problem in festivals, at least in Chicago. I think in probably every city it is but people are always getting phones, wallets, whatever stolen. Uh, it's just so easy in these huge crowded events. So that was one thing that was kind of cool is that you could link it to this. But again, you have to kind of be paying attention to all these things because I did not know that we needed to register this and that I'm in the car on the way there frantically trying to register both of our wristbands. So that is one thing to keep in mind. I have no idea if they'll do the same thing next year, but that's just something to keep in mind is that you do have to like register them and be prepped and ready for that. We did have a ton of fun at Windy City Smokeout. The music entertainment's obviously amazing. The food is really good. They also have different like stations set up with different games and activities. They had like ping pong tables, things like that. And that was super fun. They had different drink vendors so you could get margaritas at this one place, which I was happy about. But I will say my biggest complaint about the whole thing, because if you guys watch my channel regularly, you know, 
I love food. Food is my thing. That is like what I go to experience when I go to these kinds of things, especially because I'm not a huge country music fan. Like I'm down to listen to it and dance and have fun. I was definitely excited for the food. And so when we got there, um, the main act went on at 7.30. And so we got there, I think a little bit before five. And much to my chagrin, almost everything was sold out food wise. Um, anything that was like a classic pulled pork, brisket, anything that was kind of classic barbecue was all sold out. Um, which was, I mean, kind of annoying because I'm like, the, this event is going for hours longer, like quite literally hours and hours longer. It was almost five o'clock. The main act doesn't go on until 7.30. So the event's going until like 10 or 11 o'clock at night. So that was really weird to me. And it was also really disappointing because obviously we were really excited to try a bunch of different vendors. Luckily we were able to try a couple of the things that we had picked out before we went because we kind of eyed up the different vendors and we were able to try like the bulgogi ribs that we were excited about, these Thai chili ribs we were excited about. But I think that the problem is, is that when the vendors run out of food, that means that whoever's left has these huge long lines. So we're standing in this line for like 30 minutes to get like a plate of nachos. That's like crazy to me, like that's wild. And that was the problem is that so many things were sold out that the lines for what was left were just like, I mean, tons of people like lining down the row of food. And I was like, are we really gonna stand in this line just to get some nachos? I mean, we did and they were delicious, but still, I hope you get what I'm saying that when you're going and you're excited for the food to get there and find that so many options are no longer an option is kind of disappointing, especially because you pay an entrance fee to get into the festival and then you're paying for the food on top of it. So I don't know. I just kind of thought that was disappointing and not that well planned. And I talked to some other people who were at the festival and they said that a friend of theirs went on Saturday and they actually had told them to try to get there early because the food ran out on Saturday too. So just for me, I didn't love that because I'm like, you know, we came here to try all these things and it kind of sucks that so many things were already sold out. I mean, it was kind of crazy. Even side dishes were sold out and we were like, okay, well, let's get resourceful. Let's see what we have left. So that is one thing to keep in mind if you do want to go and like the food is a big focus for you, make sure you get there early and try the food because they have people that were there from like Austin, Texas, from Arkansas, from LA, vendors from all over. So definitely get there early if that's important to you. Aside from that, I mean, we had a really good time. I mean, some of that food was delicious. Those bulgogi ribs, delicious. So we did have a great time, but I just wanted to point a couple of those things out for you guys in case next year it's a similar setup. So you kind of have the vibe before you go. But that's it for this random vlog of what I did in Chicago this week. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you like seeing a couple different places I went to this week. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so below. It really does help me out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Ow, I hit myself. <laughs>